Uh, Secretary Panetta, do you believe it's a viable strategy for the United States to try to contain a nuclear-armed Iran? Yes, indeed. I mean, the idea of containment, shouldn't we prevent them from getting a nuclear capability, not contain them? It's not just contain, but it's obviously doing everything we can to prevent them right. from developing. I guess my question more <coughs> correctly asked is, should we, if they get a nuclear weapon, do you think the idea of containment is a way to go? Should we prevent them versus containing no, them? No, I think we have to prevent them. Okay. Because if they got a nuclear weapon, the damage is done. Other nations follow suit. Terrorists are more likely to get the material. That's so right. Secretary of Defense view is that the idea of containing a nuclear armed Iran is not the way to go. The idea is to prevent them from doing it. Hopefully we can do it through sanctions and diplomatic engagement. I, I hope we can. Okay. Uh, uh, China. Uh, General Dempsey, <clears throat> there's a lot of media reports that the Chinese routinely, the People Liberation Army routinely engages in cyber attacks uh, of our uh, business and national security infrastructure. Do you believe that is a reality of the 21st century? I believe someone in uh, China is hacking into our uh, systems and stealing technology and intellectual property, which at this point is a crime. I can't attribute it directly to the PLA. Well, let's say if we could find that the People's Liberation Army was involved in hacking into our defense infrastructure, would you consider that a hostile act by the Chinese? Uh, I would consider it to be a crime. I think there are other measures that could be taken in cyber that would rise to the level of a hostile act. What would they be? Attacking our critical infrastructure. And that could be a hostile act? I think so. Allowing us to respond in kind. Well, in my view, that's right. Yes, so sir. I'm going to have lunch with the Vice President of China in about 20 minutes. Uh, so what do you want me to tell him? Happy Valentine's Day. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll do that. Now, uh, by the way, Senator Graham, on my opening statement, I, Senator Graham, Yo. in my opening statement, I made it very clear that the cyber espionage going on from China is got to stop, and it's mighty serious stuff, so you can pass along, okay. if you would, uh, that comment as well. All right. Would you consider it a hostile act? I sure would. Okay, I would too. So. But happy Valentine's Day. All right. That. So, that ought to be an interesting lunch. <laughs> uh, Secretary Panetta, 2014, the game plan is to transition to Afghan security force control. They're in the lead. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And we'll have a training mission. We'll be providing intelligence gathering providing capabilities they're not quite yet capable of doing, like airlift. Is that correct? That's correct. Do you support the concept of a follow-on force past 2014 as part of, part of a strategic uh, partnership agreement that would have a military footprint post-2014 that would allow American air power to remain in Afghanistan along with special forces units at the Afghans' request? Do you think that is in our national security interest to consider such a follow-on force? Well, I, I, I believe, uh, as the President has stated, that we have to have an enduring presence uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, we need to obviously discuss what those missions are, but I think clearly CT operations is one of those missions. Training and advising is one of those missions. Enablers, uh, providing right enablers is one of those uh, positions, and obviously providing air support is one of those as well. So you would agree with the concept that post-2014, if we had a configuration of American forces with adequate air power to assist the Afghan security forces, plus a special forces component, the Taliban days are over in terms of military conquest. That ought to be the goal. I think that ought to be the goal, and I think you could do this for 15 or 20,000 troops with several air bases spread throughout the country. And to, to a war-weary public, we have air bases everywhere. And if we leave Afghanistan, and the issue is in doubt about the future of the Taliban, we will regret it. If we leave Afghanistan in a way to create a certainty about the Taliban's future, I think we can hold our heads up high. Do you think Iran is watching what we're doing in Afghanistan? I, I would think without question. OK. Iraq, General Dempsey, what is your biggest concern and your best hope about Iraq? I'll start with the best hope, and that is that uh, they, they appear to be committed to resolving the, the contentious issues among them politically, not through violence, with the exception of a few of the violent extremist organizations which remain there. Um, 
My biggest concern is that uh, they will they could potentially come to a decision that they no longer need our help. They might look elsewhere. That's why our Office of Security Cooperation there remains a, a very vital part of our strategy. Do you see the security situation in Iraq getting worse or better? I see it as being in a in a, uh, a sort of a form of stasis right now. I think it is what it is for the foreseeable future with, of course, the potential for, uh, it, based on some political decisions they might make with increasing tension, for example, in the Arab Kurd region. Okay, when it comes to the military budget, I don't see the Department of Defense as a job creator for America. That's one of the benefits, but I don't think we should view the Department of Defense as a way to just create jobs to deal with unemployment. I think we should have a robust defense capability to defend our values. So in that light, I do believe it's appropriate to reduce defense spending. And I do believe it's appropriate to consider another round of BRAC, as hard as that is for my colleagues. <clears throat> so I just count me in in the process of having to make hard decisions, even in the defense area. When it comes to uh, TRICARE premiums, is it sustainable? Or is the mandatory spending part of the budget sustainable without reform? No. So the question for the country is, if I don't get court-martialed in the next couple of years and get to be a retired colonel and receive my TRICARE benefits when I'm 60, it is okay to ask a guy like me to pay more. They haven't been adjusted since the 1990s, is that correct? That's correct. And when General Dempsey, you're willing to pay more? I am, sir. And I guess the point is that we're so far in debt, no one group is off the table. And it's hard to ask those who've done the most to secure our freedom to give more, but I'm willing to do it to the retired community. I'm willing to grandfather the current system, but I'm also willing to look outside the box because if we don't do something in terms of health care growth and entitlement uh, retiree benefits, you're going to compete uh, the retired force with, with operational needs, and that's just not where we want to go. So thank you both. Uh, I don't know if 487 is the right number, but I'll work with you to get a number that is robust. And um, one last question. Do you see a scenario in the next decade where 100,000 American troops could be involved over a sustained period of time? And if you do, how would reducing the Army and the Marines by 125,000 affect those operations? Uh, first of all, I, I don't know the answer to that, sir, but I think we wouldn't want to uh, shape a future where we completely ignored the possibility. The, the force we're building on the 13-17 budget was, is capable, we assess, of stability ops, is real long-term stability ops or prolonged conflict, uh, up to a force of about 50,000. The other 50,000 would have to come out of the Guard and Reserve. 